So today, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker crossed over $1 billion worldwide. It took 28 days to get there when it took The Force Awakens much less time. And I think The Last Jedi took 19 days to get to the billion dollar mark. So obviously, this movie is not going to beat The Last Jedi. Uh, box office wise, it's currently tracking for maybe a 1.12 or 2, 1.2 billion. It's not going to hit the 1.3 billion that uh that the rises uh, that the last jedi did which is unfortunate uh definitely a far cry from my my predictions of two billion and i will admit i did make that claim a long time ago that i amended it to like one and a half and i was way off on that one i can admit i was wrong i overestimated what i felt was going to be a positive response to this movie based off based off of the last jedi uh some people out there might argue fatigue i disagree i think the last jedi irreparably damaged the skywalker saga i do uh, I really do. And uh, there's a reason why. It's just it's not a good movie. And we can talk about that at the end of time. You know what I mean? But it's, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, this article in The Verge I wanted, to, I wanted to respond to, saying the rise of Skywalker is proof that Star Wars needs to reinvent itself. Saying not all $1 billion movies are created equal, which is true. Especially in today's marketplace. It's a very different game. $1 billion is still, you get to that, you get to that nine zeros club, man. You know, trace commas, right? Once you get into that mode, it's a different place. But... It was also something that's expected from this particular franchise. Anyway, it says here that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker has officially crossed the $1 billion mark at the box office, making it Disney's seventh film in 2019 to hit the 10-figure mark. Yeah, yeah. Disney just, it just print money. Uh, but The Rise of Skywalker has taken longer than its predecessors to hit the billion-dollar mark. The latest indication that the ninth Star Wars film just isn't doing very well at the box office compared to the other sequels. Now, it's not doing terrible. But there are different variations here, right? It's like, this is Star Wars. People look at it differently. Like, Star Wars isn't supposed to fail. It's supposed to be this titan. It's supposed to be this legacy. It's supposed to be this big, big, big thing that can never stumble. The Last Jedi proved that it could stumble and that it has long-reaching uh, long reaching impact. Now, it says, for nearly any other film, hitting $1 billion to the box office in four weeks would be something to celebrate. But The Rise of Skywalker is a Star Wars film, as well as the closing piece of the resurrected sequel trilogy. It's taken The Rise of Skywalker 28 days to cross the $1 billion mark when The Force Awakens hit that same mark in 12 days and The Last Jedi with 19. There are any number of factors likely contributed to The Rise of Skywalker underperforming, fatigue from an oversaturation of Star Wars films, or a lingering malcontent over choices made in The Last Jedi, but it's impossible to ignore that most people thought The Rise of Skywalker just wasn't very good. And again, what is their, what is their metric for this? I'm, I'm very curious, right? Uh, you know, this is, they just linked to their review. Most people liked the movie. The, the most people enjoyed it well enough. Not to say that it's like, they're going to sit there and say it's the best movie ever, but most people enjoyed the movie. It wouldn't have done a billion dollars if the vast majority of people hated on it, right? It wouldn't have done it. It just, we we're in a different space. Even Jumanji. Uh, which is a good metric to kind of look at, by the way, because Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, opened a week after The Last Jedi, did $971 million worldwide. Jumanji, The Next Level, or The Second Level, whatever the hell that movie is called, opened a week before The Rise of Skywalker, and has done $671 million worldwide. It's it's at a nearly a $300 million deficit compared to the last movie. And, and, you know, and that has gotten high marks too. So let's, I mean, let's be realistic here and like look at the fact that the box office, in some aspects, the movie movie going box office is not doing as well overall. But nobody wants to approach it from that response because this is a Star Wars movie and it should have that impact. Anything can be hit, you know. Anything can kind of feel that weight. I mean, we, if Disney's had seven one billion dollar movies this year, twenty nineteen, doesn't that really kind of make you go, are are they have they oversaturated the market themselves? I personally believe that there's a finite amount of money that goes into the box office every year. And that money, you know, if you watch, if you look at the, if you look at the year to year, you see that it's like, oh, this is a record year for ticket sales, but it's like only certain movies are hitting it. Only certain movies are hitting it, right? Not everything. And I think that, I think that comes up and this isn't me like being a, a, a rise of Skywalker apologist, but if you look at the box office from, from just like a, uh, from where things are, you can kind of see that it's like there are there are shifts that are happening 
And, and when there's a lot in the marketplace, it can start, it can have that impact. You know, it really can. And so I'm not saying the movie is perfect as it clearly has its problems. Uh, but I just find that to be like such a, such a, an absolute thing. Well, it's, it's, it's impossible to ignore that most people thought the Rise of Skywalker just wasn't very good. And, but the, but then it links to their review, which is not a metric. You maybe didn't think it was very good, but to say most people, now you're talking in absolutes. And as we've learned, only a Sith deals in those. Now it goes on to say here, other films such as Pacific Rim, The Great Wall, and more recently Pirates of the Caribbean and Transformers could rely on the international audience to make up for lackluster domestic box office. With The Great Wall with the Matt Damon China-made movie? That would have done well in China, but it wouldn't have done well here in the United States. Uh, now, while popular in the U.S., the Star Wars franchise in general has failed to make as much of a dent in the international market, especially when compared to franchises like the MCU, The Fast and the Furious, and Jurassic World. Well, again, those are all younger franchises. I mean, The Fast and Furious now is uh, coming up into its 20th year. That would be 2021 would be 20 years. Jurassic World, I mean, obviously coming off of the Jurassic Park franchise, but that had a really long gap in between those. And it did well because of the nostalgia. But then Jurassic World, uh, the second one that came out, uh, you know, uh, that ended up uh, not doing as well. Now, going on here, it says, that New as the New York Times notes, the key part of that is China. One of the biggest movie markets in the world, the Chinese audiences simply don't have the same connection to Star Wars as U.S. audiences. The original films simply weren't available in the 70s and 80s. The sequels can't ride on nostalgia. The result is that The Rise of Skywalker gets hit with both a relatively unenthusiastic domestic audience and an uninterested international audience. Now, uh, again, I, I, this is taking such a weird stance on this, saying that it's both a relatively unenthusiastic domestic audience. It was breaking box office records during Christmas week. Like every day we're talking like it had like insane amounts of, of money being thrown at it domestically. So to say that it's unenthusiastic is just, I think that's ridiculous. I think people just didn't go see it multiple times. That's not necessarily saying unenthusiastic, but people have like, but oh, God damn. Okay. If the, ugh, if the economy is doing well, people have more money. They might go see it. The economy is not doing as well as you might think, or, or as you might be told. Like, it's like there are factors at play here. It's right before the holiday break. It's right before Christmas. During the week of Christmas, people were going to see it with their families. The numbers were up. But like I said, the economy is not as good as you're being told that it is here in the States. It really isn't. Same with the job, the job market situation where the jobs are paying less. They might be lower unemployment, but the jobs aren't paying money that makes it a livable wage, right? So, so there are other factors at play here that this particular person is not taking into account, but to claim that there's not an, that that's an unenthusiastic domestic audience is just, it's just a, a fallacy in my opinion. Now to say that there's an uninterested international audience. Yeah, I will agree because he's comparing it to China. And we know how Disney plans on going after China in the future. And the fact that they're going to be, you know, creating these eBooks uh, written by Chinese bloggers that are going to go out to the 413 million people who read eBooks every single month. And they're going to try to build a grassroots movement in order to sell the next series of Star Wars to them in 2022 makes a lot of sense. It really does. I get that. But again, there's so many factors here that this particular article, I believe, is vastly, vastly, vastly overlooking. And that's one of the problems when people write these kind of op-eds. It's like they're coming at it from their perspective, but they may not actually be paying attention to the world around them. And I get that. I do the same thing. But still. Uh, anyway, it says, after Rise of Skywalker, Disney's giving the franchise some time to rest. The next film is in, uh, in the series isn't scheduled to hit theaters until 2022, assuming that there are no delays or changes. No, no, no. It's 2022 is going to happen. They give it three years. That's enough time. Uh, so the future of Star Wars for now lies in smaller shows like The Mandalorian, which just concluded its well-received first season on Disney+. Plus. Uh, second season is already in the works and two other live-action shows based on Rogue One's Cassian Andor and the prequel trilogy's iteration of young, younger Obi-Wan, played by Ewan McGregor. Star Wars will return to the big screen at some point as Rise of Skywalker shows. Even poorly received Star Wars films are still usually $1 billion box offices. Uh, well, you know, our blockbusters. I mean, obviously, Solo is the thing. But with the lore-heavy Skywalker saga concluded, it's likely that the next phase of Star Wars will look a bit more like Marvel or the Fast and Furious films, emphasizing more standalone bite-sized adventures that don't have the baggage of past films attached. And that I do absolutely agree with uh, from Hayam here. I do agree with that point. I think Hayam makes a lot of other dumb points in this article. I think Hayam here doesn't know 
uh about uh about, about everything i just i think he's he's very he says here that it needs to reinvent itself but doesn't give any real like indication for how star wars should invent reinvent itself uh this is one of those lazy ass articles where it's like it needs to reinvent itself and then you're like okay but what's your suggestion for reinventing itself oh nothing okay thanks for wasting my time thank you sir i really appreciate all of the damage you do oh my god you know how star wars needs it does it does need to reinvent itself it really does i agree with that i think the sequel trilogy uh was was uh, ill-conceived from the start i think it had a lot of problems i enjoyed it but it still had a lot of problems and uh you know like i'm happy that it's over i'm happy that we can move on the mandalorian is great i can't wait for cassie and andor i can't wait for uh obi-wan specifically because you know every time that show comes on everyone's going to be like hello there and it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be great but when it comes to the movies, going back to the High Republic, going, maybe going back to the Old Republic, where it's like years and years and years in the past, or years and years and years in the future, they can create a whole new universe with whole new characters and tell these stories. The thing with it is, though, is that they're not going to. They're not going to. They're always going to have to have one, one if it's a pinky toe or it's a full-on foot, wedged in the original uh, trilogy somewhere nostalgia is going to have to play in on itself because of that fact because they're always going to want to have that connection and they're always going to need to have that connection to some facet or another but as time goes on they'll move away from it obviously but in regards to reinventing itself yeah it does it needs to reinvent itself for a wider audience and they do want to target china and i think that's going to be a big emphasis for what comes next you know if you look at the buddhist the, the Buddhist philosophy of Star Wars that Lucas had had created for the Jedi, it makes a fair amount of sense where things are going to go, especially if they're exploring the origins of the Jedi, the, you know, the balance in the force, the yin and the yang, the light and the dark, all of those things will play into what they do next. And that is something that's going to be heavily, heavily, heavily lauded by the Chinese marketplace. And and it, it almost goes to show you that they they realize that like, <laughs> they realize that they that the American audience maybe isn't as big as you know. I don't want to say un unenthusiastic because it still did very well domestically, but it just it, things need to change, and a three year break is going to give them time to figure it out, and as well as build up a lot of hype with the Disney Plus shows. As long as the content is good, as long as the stories are good and the characters are enjoyable, people will come. Uh, what it also needs to happen though is people need to kind of get over the sequel trilogy. It's over. It's done. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Anyway, those are just my thoughts on this one. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. I will talk to you all later. Everyone have a great day and uh, peace out.